So we're going to transform some trig functions. And like you said, you recall this stuff. We'll briefly recap. This deals with reflections on the x-axis yeah. and stretching something um, vertically, stretching or compressing it. K deals with reflections on the y-axis and stretching or compressing something horizontally. D moves with transforming or moving things left and right horizontally. And C is moving things up or down. So good. You remember that stuff. Okay, the function we have down here... This function here is technically um, f at x is equal to cos x, okay? And actually, I think they've been using theta, so we're going to use theta because that, that is what we tend to use for an angle, okay? So this is cos theta, and these are all, we've just written everything in radians. They want us to write equivalent um, expressions to this that would represent uh, the yeah. same graph. So one of the things we could do is if you remember this k, k flips things on the y-axis, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is... Okay, so k would flip something on this axis. So think about, if this was negative, okay? So in other words, we'll do this one in blue. If f at x was equal to cos negative theta, in other words, our k value being negative 1, okay? Everything would flip, okay? So we'd have our 1. So this would flip over to here. This would come over to here. This guy would go over to here. He would go over to here. We'd end up with an identical function. This is the exact same thing. So it turns out to represent this graph, cos theta is an acceptable answer. Mm -hmm. Cos negative theta is also an acceptable answer. And then another thing we do is we can um, move this left and right, okay? In other words, with our d value. Mm -hmm. So let's say we use f at x cos. And in this case, we're going to have theta. And let's think of it this way. I need to move this one so that I'll end up in this spot here. Yeah. Okay? So in other words, that's a movement of how much? 2 pi. 2 pi, exactly. And if I'm going to move it to the left, do I use a positive or negative value with my d? You use a positive value. You use a positive value. So in other words, uh, theta plus 2 pi would be an acceptable answer. Right? Or... Okay, and there's so many answers like this. Just put another one there. F at x is equal to cos theta. What if I did minus 2 pi? Would it still be the same function? Yeah. Yeah, and all it would do is move it this way instead. Still making an identical function because this is goes on forever in terms of a domain. Okay. The second part of this question they wanted us to use is they want to use a different type of trig function. Okay, so let's say we had sine theta, okay? Well, we know that this isn't what sine theta is. Sine theta can't be represented that way. Sine theta, we know, starts here and does this type of pattern, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to make this sine theta equal to the graph we have here, what do we have to do? Plus or minus by pi theta. Yes, that's exactly right. Great. So we would then do f at x sine theta, and just like you said, we can, now, it won't be plus or minus, it actually has to be one of them specifically, and I'm going to draw it for you just so you can see it again, because I want to show you what the difference would be in this case, okay? Mm -hmm. For instance, if I were to do minus, which direction would I go? Say I did minus pi over 2. Oh, I see. I would shift to the right, so then my peak would be here, and I would have this type of function, which isn't the graph we're looking for, right? Yeah. Okay? So... Minus pi over 2 isn't acceptable. What do we have to use? You have to add pi over 2. That's right. So pi over 2 would then represent this graph here we have in black. But they want three examples of this. Okay, so we have sine pi over 2. Um, another thing we can do is I'm just going to show you what a negative sine function would look like. So say we had f at x is equal to sine negative theta. Okay. Well, negative theta for sine flips it on the uh, y-axis still. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen here is this one value now becomes a one value over here. So I'm just going to represent it in the green. Okay. So in other words, this point now becomes here. Okay. Um, this point stays the same. This point happens over here. This point happens over here. Okay. 
and then this point happens at negative 2. So in other words, if we take a look, this green one is representing the negative theta. Okay? Yeah. So if you notice, it's kind of almost looks like it's been flipped from what it was before. So I know it's getting a little confusing in here. But we're looking at the green one specifically. Okay? How using negative theta can I make this green one into the black graph here? What kind of shift can I use to do that? Uh, minus pi over 2. That's right. That's where we could use our minus pi over 2. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we'll do it in another color because technically it's a different graph. Let's say, let's do this purple. f at x is equal to sine negative theta. And think of the negative. Well, it should be applied to it. So yeah, negative pi over 2. Excellent. And that would shift us to where our black graph would be right mm -hmm. there. OK? So that's all this question was asking you was to use oops, was to use different functions to represent that black graph there. That was the whole idea to this.